Welcome back to our Live 3D Cubism 4 tutorial series, Introduction to Tools and Technical Concepts. This is Brian. Let's get started. Episode 4 will talk about perimeter, and this is part 2 of perimeter. Make sure you take the part 1 before you take this one. Uh, let's talk about perimeter and the concept of scalability. How does perimeter scale up your workload? This is a graph of six qualities of Iron Vertex Live 2D. Um, this is too advanced for now, so don't worry about too much about it. Uh, we just want to talk about one of the aspects, which is scalability. Scalability in Live 2D term, it means that how well your model adapts with changes. There are four kinds of general changes. Uh, how well does your model deal with adjustments when you're when you are working on your model, when you see some mistake uh, when you're working on it, or afterwards you see some mistake, you want to go back and fix it. Uh, how well does your model you know adapt to those changes? If you fix part A, would it break part 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 B, or affect something else, or would you have to? Uh, if part A has like four key forms, do you have to fix individually each of them every time? Modification is more about something that's already working. You want to try or you have to try various different approaches in order to see if what's the best result, what's, what is the best to portray the personality of the character most fittingly. Um, that's modification. Expansions is about when you have some features in your model ready or some movements that it can do, some actions it can do. What if you need to add a new one in? What if you need to add a new key form? What if you need to add uh, some more parts to the same parts that are already working? Uh, these are expansions. Can your model expand? Can your model make more things to it? Inheritance is when you have to transfer work from one version to another version of the same part. So some characters have multiple outfits, they have the default ones, they want a summer one, they want a winter one, Christmas one, they want to have uh, uniform, uh, all kinds of um, different kind of outfits, different kind of versions, or you have different versions of your hand. So say like you have the hand gesture of a palm, you have the hand gesture of a fist, and these are different kind of hands. Can you give it a new hand form without doing the arm part all over again? Or you have another character that is the same standing pose, the same art style, can you transfer work over? That's uh, scalability. What we're talking about is that when you have when you, your parameter technique will increase or decrease your scalability. Parameter arrangement is one of the things that is critical to scalability. If you're doing it right, if you follow good practices, you follow principles, you follow good habits, then you will save workload, save time, and therefore you got more money. If you're doing it wrong though, you'll give yourself a lot of work, you'll give your clients a lot of work to check your stuff because sometimes your client asks you to fix part A, he doesn't know if part B and C and D have been changed in the process, he doesn't know if it's consistently the same. Uh, other parts keep maintaining the same as you change the first part. So you're giving a client a lot more work to check on your stuff every time you submit. And then you gotta you will put a lot of limits on your model, how many things it can do, right? So you see model A doing one thing, you see model B doing uh, the other thing, you see model th uh, C doing its own thing. Can you have all of those features, all those functions apply on the same model? If you have bad parameter techniques, likely that you're not able to put as many things as you wanted to on your model. Now, not all Live 2D needs to care about scalability. Um, creative Live 2D doesn't, and I've said this in my previous episodes, in my introduction video. Uh, creative Live 2D serve to serve one purpose. Serve uh, they are designed to do one thing before they even start and they just deliver the final result in the best performance, in the best uh, form uh, possible. So they're not meant to be scalable. Technically, they're not meant to be scalable. And that's why if you're, you gotta you know what you're doing. If, you're, if you look at Creative Live 2D and you don't do it, that's normal, right? But if you're doing Technical Live 2D, please think about scalability. And we'll talk about why as we move on. And before we move on, I want to also mention that sometimes you do need to break the rules. I'm about to teach you the rules with the parameters, but you can break them only when you're ready to. 
and I do break rules all the time. Often in a lot of my models, they do uh, don't they follow they don't follow everything I teach you right now. But first, you gotta master the fundamentals, and then you know what you're doing. You know what the risk you're taking, and you know how to make uh, precaution measures before doing them, so to ensure that it doesn't break, it doesn't do wrong things uh, other than the thing it wants you want it to do. So rule number one is that, or that's actually just one rule, is that you don't you shouldn't have more than two parameters per object. If you select an object, it could be a deformer, it could be an art mesh. Um, I haven't talked about deformer yet, but we'll talk about it later. But if you select something on the canvas and they show up um, in green dots, uh, which parameter that this object is active in, it has registered keyforms in, you don't want to see more than more than two parameters light up at the same time. And in this graph, you're looking at three of them, and that's already wrong. Well, not wrong, but it's already dangerous and it's it's violating the rule the good principle of of having a scalable f2d now let's talk about why you shouldn't all right here's an example let's say you have parameter a that has key forms zero and one you have parameter parameter b with again with two key forms zero and one so you got a total of four combinations it can do four different um unique you had four different unique states that it can transform into. If you got A0 and B0, you got the default. If you have A0 and B1, it does B. If it's A1 and B0, it does A. And you got A1 and B1, you got A and B. Which gives, gives us this table, and this is the default, A0 and B0. When A1 and B0, you get A, and A0 and B1, you get B and a1 and b1 you get a before example uh if this is the case of the mouth you can say this is the a is like the shape of the mouth so this is a normal mouth with normal smile and this is a big smile so this is very happy this is the default state yeah and this is b is basically representing mouth open and closed where zero is closed one is open so at the normal default state, when the mouth is a natural smile that is closed mouth, you got this default A0, B0. And then A1, B0 is when it's smiling with a big smile. A0, B1 is when it's a normal open mouth talking, default state when it, the, the default uh, not neutral uh, expression when it's talking. A, B is when it's talking, when the mouth is fully open in a very happy mouth shape. So this is kind of the idea of having two param parameters, each of two key forms. Think about now, what if we add a third one, par parameter C, with two key forms, zero and one? How much workload would it create or increase? Now you will see three param parameters in your param panels. There's A, B, and C, each with two green dots. You may think two plus two plus two is six. All right, so you got six key forms to deal with. No, because when you had the third one in with two param parameters, you actually are having total of eight. You have two times two times two. You have eight different key forms to work with. Now think about what if you have three params, each with three key forms. How does that scale up? Okay, so I think we'll look at um, an actual example right here before we continue. Let's say this is this is the final work that you have. You have angle X left and right. You have angle Y up and down and up. And then you have angle Z. You can assume that this is uh, three key forms instead of five. I mean, I have five here because I need to polish some points here. But you got five, you got three here. So it's three, three, and three. How many key forms do you deal with? Do you think it's nine? No, because just by angle X and Y, you already have eight key forms to deal with. There's this, this, there's up, uh, top right, right, bottom right, bot low, uh, down, and then bottom left, left, and upper left. So you already got eight directions to eight direction, eight key forms to deal with. And if you stack up with the third parameter with three key forms, you are asking a total of 26 key forms to work on. 
So your, your workload will grow exponentially if you stack up your parameters in the same object. And same with body, you may have body X, sorry, body X, body Y, and then you may have body Z. All right. And in fact, in, in my model, I got up to like six parameter, parameters for just the body movement. So how much workload is, does that give me if I put them all on the same object? So let's do the math. One param, three key forms. Great. Two params, eight key forms plus one default, right? So you don't have to deal with that, that one default one, but you got eight, deal with. Three params, each with three key forms, a total of 26 key forms. One head has at least 14 objects, and basically like five hairs, two eyes, two brows, one nose and one mouth, and uh, maybe inner mouth, maybe uh, uh, teeth, maybe there's iris, there's eyeballs, there's upper eyelash, side eyelash, lower eyelash. You got way more than that. So let's say roughly around 14 things with the face and with two ears, you know. We got 14 things to deal with, each having three params and three key forms. One head times three parameters with three key forms each. We're talking about 14 parts times 26 key forms you got to work with 364 key forms. How many minutes does it take you to finish one key form? All right, let's say 10 minutes per key form, a total of 60 hours of work. 60 hours of work just to do a head that doesn't even blink, doesn't even talk, and just move around. And if you say like, okay, you're an entry level junior, or you cheat the lowest, lowest price in the market, you're ch charging around, maybe $12 per hour. How much are you supposed to charge? A total of $722 for just a simple head that doesn't even blink or talk. All right, so imagine there is a better method. If I tell you that there's a good principle to follow, allows you to reduce 26 key forms down to 10 key forms. What does it mean? It means that it will save you 36 hours of work it will save you $432 um, US dollars, basically, of the budget, right? So just by having good practice, you can drop your workload a lot, you can earn a lot more money because you don't even charge that much or you wouldn't be underpaid. That's about scaling up the problem, all right? Now, now let's let's scale even further. If, let's talk about like, what if it's an enterprise live 2D project, okay? If you got an enterprise project that you may charge $2,000, but because you have bad practice, that increase your workload by 2.6 times, and that's a total of $5,200, okay? And the project has 40 models, normal, right? Enterprise project has 40 mo uh, models, like uh, Bank Dream, Utah Prince, a few other examples, prime examples that would that use live 3D models. They got 40 or even more than that. Like Destiny Child has millions, or not millions, but like hundreds of models. And um, the projects are big. You got to multiply the math uh, by the number of models you make. So if one model charges $5,200, all right, you got 40 models to do. We're talking about uh, $122,000 difference because of this 2.6, you're increasing the budget for the enterprise project this much. Or think about another way to think about it is that if someone else with a bad practice with the not without following the principles that you're following with, someone else take three months to build a model. You take one month because you follow good principles. All right, well, that means that you do things three times faster than the other guy does. Or, or girl, you know, the other person does. Or you can think that, you know, by the time some someone finished their first model, you already make three. So that's something I want you to keep in mind as you proceed with this course. The more scalability that your model has, the less the project budget scales up. So the right answer to this magical technique that would reduce your key forms from 26 down to 10 is deformers. Deformer is something that we'll talk about in three to four episodes down the road. Uh, we're not gonna learn about it now, but I just want to leave you with a right answer in your head is that the only way to do this or some way to do this is to shift 
parameter task to deformers, from object to deformers, from art mesh to deformers, and deformers to another deformer, another to another deformer, and stack them up into a hierarchy. And with multiple deformers arranged properly, that's what we call a structure, that's what we call architecture. What I'm trying to say is that you gotta plan ahead, you gotta plan carefully with your parameters, who is doing what. <clears throat> and that way, you can save your workload, you can make your model scalable. This episode totally went over time, I'm sorry about that. Um, there is another episode, uh, bonus episode video, that would show you a hands-on working of a model with the learning material, the little gray box, how we are gonna try out with parameters transformation in order to understand why um, scalability matters. So go through that exercise and I'll see you guys in the next episode. We'll talk more about parameter and we'll talk about handy functions that could save you time, save you workload so that you don't do labor work over and over again. All right, so make sure you go over that one. Otherwise, if you miss it, I'll know it. I can tell that if you're asking questions that, you know, about uh, things that I mentioned in the extra episode, I know that you didn't watch it. So go ahead, take some time to watch it, open your cubism and follow along with it. Um, have some fun, right? So yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.